I start my day with some good tea. And I always sharpen my tweezers. How's it going everyone? I have this case here. This is a, I think, Note 4. Or Galaxy S5, I don't know. Um, this phone is went to, um, to another shop and they, um, they couldn't get into it. We need all the deleted data. So what they've done is um, they broke the screen so the phone has already been open. So we're gonna try to recover data. I've already attempted uh, UFED on this phone and unfortunately UFED I uh, was not able to um, get into this phone because of the firmware revision. Um, so the only option we got left at this point is to um, take it apart, get, a, get the motherboard out, and then we can um, either do chip off or ISP. I'm going to try ISP. Uh, they want to preserve this phone. This is a forensic case, so this phone wants to be uh, the, the company that hired us wants this phone preserved. So that's what we're going to do. Okay. Let's open this phone up. So yeah, screen is detached. And all we got here is some screws. So let's take these out. What I don't like about these particular phones is um, it's hard to open them, even if I had to um, even if I had to open it, it's very difficult not to break the screen, especially if the glass is already broken. Um, then you end up with a um, cracked screen regardless, and the LCD is super thin. The LCD is right here. It's, it's an OLED, so it's super thin, So um, and it's glued with these strips right here, right to the back of the phone. So just to, to remove it, you have to kind of pry it underneath here, and then you have to remember there's a ribbon cable connecting right here so if you come too close to the ribbon cable you actually cut it with the tool and uh, but you have to remove this glue here so it's, it's just absolute pain in the ass to work on these phone phones so um, so we gotta do it this way Okay, so we're gonna pull the shield. Shield's off and also, we gotta cut the shield off right here. Alright, so what we're going to use is we're going to use um, this adapter for um, uh, ZX, 3ZX Easy J Tag. Now, very important to keep these wires as um, equal length as possible because the problem is um, if you don't keep them uh, at the same length, you might have an issue with reading the signal. So I try to keep them at the same length, but you know it's not always possible. I mean, they could be off by a little bit. And um, <clears throat> I got my um, ISP pinout right here, and I'm gonna solder uh, one, two, three, four, five, six wires onto the motherboard. So the first one is CLK, and CLK should be right here.
next wire is 1.8 1.8, that's it. Next, next one is command. Command, that's it. Next one is DAT0, so there should be a spot right here. Need some more solder on there. in the next one is the 2.8 2.8 and the last one is ground. And ground could be anywhere. Uh, we can just go on the shield here. So it's okay. We're going to plug it in now and see if it works. So here we are with Easy J Tag. We're going to plug it in. Just got to be careful not to uh, mess with the wires, they could be a bit flimsy. And I'm going to check if the chip is detected. And we got the chip here, it's detected. It's a 16 gig. So now we can uh, read the EMMC directly using the ISP connection, which is in-system programming. This took about an hour and a half. Um, uh, there's been some errors during the extraction. You can see the easy JTAG is be trying um, a few addresses on this particular chip, but um, all in all, we got the entire chip uh, read into a binary file. And now we can take it over to uh, Celebrate UFED. We can find the profile physical, load the uh, bin, and uh, let the uh, UFED start decoding this data. And there it is. All the data, including deleted. Anyways, thank you for watching. Uh, we'll have new videos coming up uh, hopefully soon. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please uh, subscribe. 
and don't forget to like and share this video thanks see you later